proposing as part of this amendment either. And the reason why you're not adding it to there? Uh, typically, in terms of auto sales, uh, they're something that is more of a destination oriented um, uh, for size and space and lighting and that sort of thing. It's not something that's necessarily agriculturally related, which is what the rural commercial zone is intended for. In terms of auto sales, it's typically more of an urban uh, destination zone, and that's why we weren't proposing to include it as part of the rural uh, agricultural uh, oriented list of, of opportunities within the rural area. Okay, well, I've looked in our zoning bylaw, and I couldn't find actually any spot that said that was allowed. Just sales, not a mechanic, just selling cars where you had a lot. And I know we have one in Lancaster. I don't know what a zone is particularly, but it's been there for as long as I can remember. You, Mr. Mayor, we're just looking through the various zones to, to, to see what uh, we can find, but we have a hunch that um, perhaps the uh, property you're talking about in Langton might actually be in the CBD zone um, and that it would be applicable there. So what would be the harm of having it in the rural commercial zone if someone wanted to smart, start, start up a small detailer and, or like a, do sales and detailing and what's the difference to planning? Again, the, the rural commercial zone historically is uh, more for uh, farm implement uh, tractor uh, dealerships, those sorts of things that are more farm oriented. Um, it's not something that we perceive uh, to happen in the rural area, and those again would be more in the urban boundary. Um, and that, that's what the basis of this uh, implementation is for. So it would only be allowed in the urban boundary? That's a, a yeah, the C, for example, the CBD is within the urban boundary, so that's a good example of where it would be located. Okay, so in my ward, basically, you would not be able to open up a, a car sale spot because there is no room. Yep. Um, um, in the Port Rowan area, there is a CBD zone there. A and also, um, just because it's not specifically listed in the rural commercial zone doesn't um, permit or doesn't... Someone could come forward on a site-specific basis <coughs> if they really wanted that use somewhere else. I guess the concern is with my area, like you can't park there, there's not enough spots and because without extending the urban boundaries, basically that holds that particular business back. We're unable to sell cars in that area. Right? It just doesn't make sense to me if we're going through all this trouble to change things to do more business. Right? Shannon? Uh, yeah. through, through you, Mr. Mayor, what I would recommend in those situations, Councillor Height, is that if someone was interested in a business venture in the rural area um, with the automobile dealership, um, that they would come forward on a site-specific basis. That would allow the, the farm uses that are neighboring, uh, the property owners that are neighboring, to have an opportunity uh, to say if it's um, a good thing in that area or not um, on a site-specific basis. Okay, thank you. Pam, did you find what you're looking for? Or I mean, Shannon? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Unfortunately, not at this moment. Um, but we staff can definitely look into it and follow up uh, with uh, some information to Council That's on fine. that matter. Councillor Walls. Very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Again, going back to this because I'm confused, and I know tomorrow I'll have uh, numerous calls, so I'll try my best to understand this. I'm going back to page 474, and I want to talk about this parking of recreational vehicles. I understand the first part we talked about that would be trailers and that sort of thing. Do boats fall into recreational vehicles as well? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, they do. So you try to explain to me when I speak to my residents tomorrow, because we have a lot of boaters and they have boats, that they pay property tax, they have a license, they want to bring their vehicle home, but they can only leave it there for three days. In spite of the fact they have a license, and they pay property tax, so they really don't have use of their own property for more than three days. Am I correct on that? So that when I'm on the phone, I can say, yes, you do not have permission to do that. If uh, this passes, of course. Three, Mr. Mayor, that is, that is correct. Uh, in terms of recreational vehicles, they include a, a number of uh, 
vehicles uh, for such purposes, including uh, your full kind of traditional RVs, uh, your camper camper vans, fifth wheels, um, boats, and everything kind of under that nature. Anything further, Councillor Wells? Good. Uh, I have been sitting for over two and a half, well, we have been sitting for over two and a half hours. My bottom is asleep. I would, um, I know we have a number of speakers that will be speaking. Uh, when I'm going to call a very short stretch break. When that big hand on that clock up there gets on the eight, that's in seven or eight minutes, I will be in my seat ready to go. So I would like to just take a very quick break. Thank you.
report first. Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in support of the proposed amendments? Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to the matter? I saw this gentleman first, and then I see you second, Mary. When you come down, would you come down to the microphone and please give us your name? My question, uh, oh, my name is Rick Luska. I, I have a, a place down in uh, Old Cut. Yes, Rick. And I guess that's considered uh, vacation property? Resort. Resort. So if, uh, my question is about these recreational vehicles. So person owns property down there and they also own, own a travel trailer. They use it two months of the year and they park it in their driveway for 10 months. That's legal now or illegal? Because she said she was going to amend it to only uh, urban properties, but Long Point is not an urban area. So well, my we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get a, we'll get an answer to your question. Uh, this council is going to consider whether it will restrict those uh, vehicles, recreational vehicles, to the urban areas only. That, that is something we will determine. Uh, so I mean, your question, I think, is, is it legal now what you're doing or what people are doing in the resort area by parking, let's say, year-round, except when they're on the road, correct? Yeah, if they go to Snowbirds, go down for a month or two. Yeah. Uh, Shannon, can you respond to that as to the current status on those? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in terms of the current status, there are no provisions uh, that address uh, kind of the parking of recreational vehicles. So at this time, they are kind of permitted carte blanche on any property within the uh, within Norfolk County. Okay. So somebody could, what you're saying is they could park their trailer there for 10 months of the year and only use it two, two months? Is that what you're saying? Right now, correct. That is, that is. But uh, the amendment is. is for 72 hours, they can only park it there? Uh, that is what the bylaw is uh, proposed at this time, but there has been the discussion to amend uh, how that uh, provision is, is being put forward uh, so that it would restrict it to uh, urban residential zones or urban and hamlet residential zones, depending on council's desire. And, and, and my next question would be recreational vehicles like a boat. So somebody owns a cottage at Long Point, they own a boat, they can't afford or don't have the ability to take their boat and park it in a slip so they have a piece of property. They put it in on Friday night and they take it back out on, on, on Sunday night, park it on their property for four or five days. That is currently permitted or not permitted? It wouldn't be permitted if what you're saying is true. Through you, Mr. Mayor, currently it is permitted, uh, and uh, but if the bylaw changes uh, through these proposed amendments, it wouldn't be permitted to be parked uh, for more than the 72 hours. Good luck on that one. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Mary? My name is Mary Weber. Um, I'm talking about, I'm, a, I'm against changes to section 11 of the zoning bylaw, hazard land and change houses. Currently there's no setbacks for building on hazard land because you can't get a building permit on hazard land. So it's just a moot point. They've never had any setbacks. Um, you can get a permit from the uh, Long Point Conservation Authority to build a change house now on hazard land as long as it's less than 108 square feet. In fact, three permits were issued this summer for change houses um, on Hastings Drive, which is hazard land. I don't understand why all of a sudden in this bylaw that you are specifically pointing out change houses, you talked about sheds, they have less of a setback. You've made no mention of setbacks for pavilions, which under the zoning are allowed to be built now. Um, as you know, I'm right now involved in an OMB <coughs> Uh, hearing appealing a proposed draft bylaw, one said 2014, which is attempting to sterilize what can be done on Hastings Drive. 
Um, there's 150 lots on hazard land. Right now, they want to say no trailers, no overnight parking, no docks, no wharfs, no piers, and no change houses. We are in the middle of fighting that. I feel this council should not be making decisions, not be adding restrictions to this bylaw, which directly affects usage on Hastings Drive properties, as long as the county is involved in an OMB hearing on that bylaw. I feel that this is yet another way to squash property owners' rights on Hastings. If you pass this zoning amendment, you'll be effectively setting the very restrictions that have not yet been clarified by the Ontario Municipal Board. This is prejudicial at the very least, and I feel no changes should be made to any sections dealing with hazard land, which the whole length of Hastings Drive is, until after the decision of the, OME, the OMB Board. Um, this issue, usage of properties on Hastings Drive, has been before this council many times. I've spoken before this council many times. And you've never been able to come to a conclusion as to what can and cannot or should and should not be done on this land, um, this hazard land. So it's now before the OMB. I'm representing a group of property owners, those that have cottages and those that have vacant lots. Uh, we've had to hire a lawyer, we've had to hire a planner, we are spending a lot of money to get this issue dealt with, and I don't think that um, you should be making any changes to this bylaw. Let the OMB decide. It's already in the courts now, and by doing this, you're just, you're just adding fuel to the fire, and I think anything that has to do with hazard land right now, changes in the bylaw that is before the courts should not be done until after the OMB hearing comes down. Thank you. And, and Mary, if I may, this proposal here is not taking change houses out of the hazard land. It's leaving it in. It's dealing with setbacks. Shannon, do you wish well, to comment on okay, that? Okay, it's dealing with setbacks, but six meters, 20 feet from the road, there are a lot of properties that don't have 20 feet. Um, th my point is there are, no, there are no setbacks now on hazard land. There are no setbacks on hazard land because you can't build there. So why put, a, why put a setback on a change house? Three change houses have been given Shannon, permission this summer. Shannon, do you wish to comment? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. In terms of the uh, inclusion, uh, th there's, there's kind of two parts uh, with respect to the change houses. Uh, one uh, deals with uh, the definition. Um, the definition is being raised in terms of it is a, a use that is already defined with, or excuse me, already included within our zoning bylaw. And it has uh, been an issue that we have seen uh, over the last six, eight months in, in terms of um, variance applications and uh, requests for change houses and not with respect to the Hastings Drive and other areas of the municipality. So in terms of the definitions, um, it, it is an item that what applies countywide uh, in terms of, of just the overall what a change house is when our building department receives uh, permits for those types of uses. In terms of the hazard lands, um, change houses again are permitted as of right within the hazard land zone uh, and uh, change houses uh, in uh, some of the discussions that we had are, are considered an accessory building. Accessory buildings are subject to um, setbacks in a number of our other zones and within the hazard land zone uh, they don't have that, that same allowance or that same provisions. So what the amendment is doing is proposing to, to maintain that. Uh, it applies, again, countywide, so any property that has a hazard land zone or designation on it, <coughs> this would apply to it. Um, so in, in terms of moving forward, the six meter setback is a standard uh, setback in terms of all properties and because all properties are going to have lot lines so it's just looking at having some sort of uh, building envelope in which uh, the type of use can be located uh, uh, for the county as a whole. I understand that and I understand why you want to make a unified ruling across the county. My point is there's an OMB hearing that we have started specifically with this bylaw 
and it narrows it down to the 150 lots on Hastings. How the county deals with this um, is going to change the outcome of what's going to happen with this OMB hearing. And all I'm saying is, we're already dealing with a bylaw that we're fighting. The last thing we need right now is for you to throw a, a change in with your parameters in that, and then we have to rethink all our, all our arguments and all our thinking and all our plans for this bylaw. And all I'm saying is, I'm not telling you don't put setbacks. If that's what you want to do, put setbacks on change houses, on hazard land. All I'm saying is changing rules for usage on hazard land should not be done now until after the OMB hearing makes its decision. It may be a moot point. We may, we may have 3.2 kilometers of road in this county that will be totally sterilized that nobody can do anything on, and that's what we're fighting against. So I don't think you should make any changes on hazard land right now until the OMB hearing is over. Pam? Through you, Mr. Mayor, if it's Council's prerogative, um, planning staff is, is happy um, to table uh, the issue of hazard land and change houses, Section 11, and uh, bring that back in the spring after the Hastings Drive OMB hearing. Uh, we are planning to do another cleanup uh, by law in the spring, and we'd be happy to do so. Thank you very much. That's Anything further, Mary? Nope, that's fine. Any questions from Council to the Speaker? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to this uh, application? Mr. Hellyer, and uh, you may come to the microphone, and then Mr. Radfield. Andy, I could use a hand hang, handing these out. Um, your Worship and Council, um, my name is Peter Hellyer. I'm a Norfolk County farmer. I have recently been a party to an OMB hearing regarding the suitability of a particular Simcoe site's feasibility as a crematorium. Uh, extensive research went into this hearing and I have reviewed the changes to the comprehensive zoning bylaw proposed by staff and I respectfully ask that a number of changes be made to the text. I have three areas of concern and we'll, with, we'll deal with them in the priority to which I attach their significance. My first concern is with respect to the setback to sensitive land use. Staff is recommending 70 meters, as that is the guideline from the Ministry of the Environment for Class II industry. I need to remind Council that this is only a guideline. It is not statute law. If there is significant evidence to increase the setback to sensitive land use, there is justification for changing it to what is appropriate. It should be noted that crematoria have a 300 meter influence zone and many municipalities have used 300 meters as the setback to sensitive land use. 300 meters is the generally accepted influence zone for class two industry according to the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change. But we do need to note from the Ministry of the Environment D1 land use and compatibility documents, distance is often the only effective buffer, however, and therefore adequate separation distances based on a facility's influence area is the preferred method of mitigating adverse effects. A crematorium is a noted emitter of dangerous pollutants linked to serious health problems, especially for children. That is a fact. 
state-of-the-art equipment cannot alleviate all of the emission. Only separation distance from the source can do that. There are many things that cannot be mitigated on a day-to-day -day basis. Such items as obese persons, rubber body, body bags, pacemakers, foreign objects in the casket, crematorium operators can't, cannot touch a body, casket varnish, formaldehyde from embalming fluid, battery explosions, and I could add an awful lot to this list. Obese people are an issue as an obese person is like having a grease fire. There will be clouds of black yucky smoke from such a cremation. We are all cognizant of the fire in Innisville on December 24th, 2014, where the cremation of an obese person got out of control, started a chimney fire, then it proceeded through the roof and ultimately consumed the entire crematorium structure itself. So adequate separation distance to sensitive land use is a necessity. At the OMB hearing, hearing case, 170026, I provided evidence to Madam Chair Jacobs that the proper setback and that the setback that should be deemed good be planning would be 200 meters. The first piece of evidence was a quote from the Cremation Act 1980, 1902 from the United Kingdom. United Kingdom law is considered persuasive in Canadian courts. This wording is current and it says that no crematorium shall be constructed nearer to any dwelling house than 200 yards, except with the consent and writing of the owner, lessee, and occupier of such house, nor within 50 yards, remember 50 yards, of any public highway, nor in the consecrated part of the burial ground of any burial authority. I would also like to submit as evidence to this argument excerpts from the Nutrient Management Act. This act affects farmers such as me. What it says under section 11 subsection 3 is that an incinerator used to incinerate dead farm animals must be located at least 200 meters from the lot line in a residential area and from land that has a commercial community or institutional use. The act mentions the required temperature to cremate dead animals and the need for primary and secondary chambers to reduce emissions. I would also like to submit that if this is what is the separation distance required of farmers to residential land use to cremate farm animals, that it would only be logical that this is the required separation distance for any crematorium that does human beings as well. This argument was put forward at the public meeting of March 28, 2017. The Strathroy Crematorium, of which a number of local funeral directors hold an equity interest, I am showing in Appendix 8. And if you could kindly turn to Appendix 8, so that you, it is obvious to a reviewer that this is a heavy industrial area with no sensitive land use close by, and I've highlighted its location with a red arrow. I have provided an aerial frame picture of Mount Pleasant Cemetery, Toronto as Appendix B. And the closest house is just shy of 200 meters. And this dimension was confirmed by church and trout consulting engineers who did the stack testing on this crematorium. It did pass Ministry of the Environment specifications with its new equipment. And the report shows that odor, for example, was measured at 200 meters from the point of impingement. I would also like to point, I would like council to review a picture of the Holy Cross crematorium, which is the closest crematorium to Norfolk. And that would be Appendix C, which is the picture from the air. And Appendix D is the frame picture. The closest house is 232 meters away from the crematorium and is owned by Holy Cross as part of its property. The closest property not owned by Holy Cross is on the other side of the street, so in essence, this crematorium has no possibility of complaint by neighbor or adverse effect. All of this evidence suggests to me that the separation to sensitive land use should be 200 meters, that being, that being not the 300 meters of the entire influence zone, 
but one where we know that stack testing on state-of-the-art equipment can produce desirable results and it is sufficient for when things go wrong in the crematorium's operation such that there is no adverse effect to neighbors. Proceeding to the next topic in order of my perceived priority, I would like to make comment on the proposed section F as shown on page 477 of the agenda package. Staff have written minimum setback to any residential zone, school, community center, or place of recreation 70 meters. I believe that I have established that 200 meters would be the better setback, but I am troubled by this section and would prefer that it referred to sensitive land use as defined by the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change, and I have attached this as Appendix E. The main issue is using the term residential zone, the word zone being the principal offending word. A strict interpretation of this phrase would exclude all of the houses that are zoned to agriculture as there is no agriculture residential zoning. I believe that staff have muddied the waters on this tonight in section 3.2.1. They are requesting a larger floor area in an agricultural area when they mean on agricultural residential properties of small non-farm size. I would prefer that the definition of sensitive land use from the Ministry of the Environment be used as there, it is clear and unambiguous in its definition and includes better terminology so that there can be no interpretation that a house that is zoned agriculture and is not part of the typical six residential zones is included in any setback of a crematorium development. It is altogether a better definition. The third matter that I would like to discuss, although it is not a biggie for me, is the requirement to have a minimum lot size of eight hectares. Uh, I don't see the need for this, and I believe that 20 acres is a big chunk. I personally believe that 200, two hectares would provide sufficient size for a crematorium, provided that the point of impingement is at least 200 meters from sensitive land use. I am supportive of the minimum front yard, exterior side yard, interior uh, and rear yard of 30 meters, even though the evidence I have already presented would say that the, from the UK that it should be 50 yards. I note that this would be tight on a one hectare site to have these setbacks, but I believe it be, to be quite doable on a two hectare site. As was mentioned at the public meeting on March 28, 2017, there are properties that have all of the criteria that I'm proposing on Luscombe Avenue and Simcoe, and they are available at very reasonable cost together with the eligibility for municipal grants as well. It is my intention that my comments are the same for general industrial and community institutional. And although it hasn't been mentioned in the documents before you this evening, it should be applied to the rural institutional and neighborhood institutional zones as well, as they too have listed crematoria as a potential land use. Your Worship, many thanks for allowing me to participate this evening, and as always, I would be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Any questions from Council to Mr. Hellyer? Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Peter. Uh, I, was, I was curious, and that's all this is, your reference to the Cremation Act of 1902. Is that, you're saying that's still in effect as legislation? Well, they have updated it continuously. Yeah. So they are still referred to as a Cremation Act, 1902 or 1903, whatever it is. But the wording is current okay. as of today. All so, right. Thank you. Anything further? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hallier. Mr. Radfield? That was well said, wasn't it? Okay, uh, my complaint is the with the eight hectares that's proposed, or 19.762 acres, or uh, 76 acres, which is the minimum lot area. Now, as you know, I have approached uh, Norfolk County Council to build a crematorium several times. I have invested $187,000 of my personal money in this venture. 
I have now reached a point at an age that I'm no longer interested in developing anything in Norfolk County, but I have a, a, a company or a father and two sons that wishes to develop an area in Simcoe, in industrial land, and these changes do not fit, uh, or especially this 19 acres, does not fit in the, 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 the scheme of things that we have. Now, originally, many years ago, I spoke to Andy Newberry, who was then uh, principal of Fanshawe College, about wanting to put uh, a crematorium course in Fanshawe College to train people because there are very few trained people. I recently spoke with Fanshawe College, Donna Gates, I believe is her name, and they have written back and said the uh, uh, program for cremation is now in another community college up north. So we lost out on that one. Uh, I mentioned about using cremation or uh, microwave as a possible source of uh, cremation. 60% of a person is moisture. Uh, it was a closed circuit, and as soon as Monty put it in the paper, guess what? It ended up in Japan. Okay, so we lost out on that one, guys. So the third one that I haven't introduced yet is I have acquired uh, a casket liner cloth of which uh, uh, will withstand uh, uh, 2,100 degrees for eight hours, and it will be a liner within a casket or a cremation box. The idea is that this will be folded in and you only get the ashes that the person is. You don't get all the wood ashes, you don't get all the other scrapings from everybody else's ashes from a normal crematorium. I myself am, uh, have spoken to uh, Malahide Township who are interested in my proposal and I'm turning the torch over to this father and two sons who own industrial land in Simcoe and I wish that you would give them your, your best effort. It will be nowhere near Mr. Hellier's uh, castle, bro, property, sorry, property. Uh, but, uh, it will be far enough away that there are no residential areas in here, but it certainly doesn't fit with 19 acres, so maybe you can change that. At the OMB hearing, they said it goes back to Norfolk County. You must first obtain permission from Norfolk County to get a license to proceed with the 42 other steps. Uh, I hope that you give this other company encouragement and it will take five years for it to be reality. That's all I have to say. Thank you for yeah, your thank efforts. You. Thank you, Jack. And yep. you're, I think what I'm getting from you is the concern for the eight hectares or 19 acres of minimum lot area. Correct. Have you got a suggestion of what you'd like to see that reduced to? You don't have to give it to me. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, we were told at the Ontario Municipal Board to have a meeting with Norfolk County to find out what was compatible. Okay. When this proposal... Uh, I don't quite know how to say this. Uh, this, this company own uh, a parcel of land that has recently been severed and they're waiting for the funds to change hands, which will probably be within the next month. At that point, I will be able to clarify exactly what it is okay. and we will meet with them and Norfolk County staff by the way, I'd like to thank Matt Vaughn, who is now not listening, but Matt Vaughn, he, he followed the rules of the Ontario government to a T in the previous proposal where we were converting the rifle range on First Ave to, uh, to a crematorium site. That is no longer uh, feasible, or no longer uh, in the workings. I've, I've got your lot area concern noted here. Councillor Oliver, question for Mr. Bradfield, yeah. please. Mr. Mr. Mayor, thanks very much. On, on the same line, uh, Mr. Uh, Bradfield, how do you feel about Mr. Hellyer's suggestion of two hectares instead of eight as a minimum size? Well, 
Uh, okay, let's talk acres. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> Whatever. A quarter of the size of what our proposed amendment changes it to. Y yeah, uh, we have six acres, but we don't want to use the full six acres of vacant industrial land uh, for the cremation. We would like to use a laneway where it goes back into a wooded area and uh, the crematorium itself would be secluded sure. other than the laneway. Now, our own shop, which is Bradfield Monuments, operates on 28 feet on highway commercial property and it would be in similar to, to our, our shop and going back towards Sutton's Pond. So you're saying you, you, you have or would have access to a six acre parcel roughly, which would be in the range, not a little bit less than two hectares, but very close then. Yeah, but is it necessary to you? See, all we need is 14 feet for a, a crematorium no, no, I retort. understand that. Yeah. You're not going to use, you're not going to build a building on the whole yeah. six acres. You're going to use that size parcel. That's, yeah. that's but, what our, that's what our bylaw amendment yeah, would say. Yeah, what we'd like to do is is sever off a portion for the crematorium. We don't need all the frills uh, or, or the extra acreage uh, to uh, spruce up the place, uh, but uh, Mr. Hellyer would prefer that we have a 200 meter umbrella of odor. So we're gonna try and work with Norfolk County to see what they'd recommend. Uh, we'll work with Mr. Hellyer if okay, he wants. Th yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions from council? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bradfield. Okay. Thank You're you. Welcome. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to <coughs> the proposed amendment? Yes, my name is Ken Olmsted. I live in Port Dover and I'm against the uh, parking of well, I'm in favor of parking rec recreational vehicles on your property. If they have a five meter setback, that's, that's fine by me as long as, I think as long as it's not in front of your house, nobody should be complaining. Um, if it's in your backyard even, I don't think any sh anyone should have any complaints. And um, because there's, there's many people in our neighborhood that do have uh, RVs or or boats or whatever, but they do have them. They're not in their front yards; they're in their side yard or side driveway, and uh, I don't see where it's any different than a rural property. If they, if you want to do something like that, you should ban that for everyone because the ultra rich have uh, built mammoth houses out in the country, and they have no problem with this. And you're uh, attacking. Just the people that are everyday people that uh, want to have a boat or want to have a trailer and and use it. That's that's my thought. Thank you, Ken. Questions for Mr. Olmsted? Thank you, sir. Anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or general to the amendment? Anyone else? I hear none. <clears throat> Anything further from uh, council? Uh, just before I look for a motion to close the public uh, meeting, uh, there are some concerns raised here. I have listed four. I could have missed one. We'll find out. Um, do you wish, how do you wish to proceed on? Do you wish to have them included in a motion to give direction? Staff, I just want to do this the simplest way. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we're open uh, to suggestions. Um, staff, from what we've heard this evening, have some of our, our own suggestions here. If Council would like us, we could outline that for consideration. We're, we're, we're at your call. You got any suggestions? Like I'm wondering, on these four topics, to go back, they could be looked at again and brought back? Would you need that in a motion, or can I get a consensus from Council on each item? Um, th three, Mr. Mayor. I I'm sorry? Yeah, I think that... Okay, um, but we might want to close the public meeting and then uh, proceed to hear from Well, staff. I'm going to close the public yeah. meeting, absolutely. I just want to make sure... Chris? Yeah, our, our clerk is correct, and I know you're on that way. Mr. Mayor, you're going to close the public meetings. Yes. Perhaps uh, we've got a list of about seven or eight items, 
and perhaps council would like to vote on each one show support well, if it approves one or the other and just move on that way okay <clears throat> and what I'll do is I will I will close the public meeting first and then we'll give direction okay I should have done that um, motion black Sonnenberg seconded those in favor of closing the public meeting that's scary thank you okay uh, Councillor Black, uh, you have the floor on this. Well, I'm ready to try and start it off. But uh, um, just like Chris said, um, maybe it should be done motion by motion. And the, my first motion would be in reference to 4.2. It's on page 473. And that's the parking provisions, location of parking on a lot. Um, and it would be to support that in the urban area of Simcoe. Well, I, I, I agree. We're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a bylaw that's countywide, not uh, specific to one urban area. Uh, Pam, do you wish to comment on that? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, if I may, just with the conversation that we've heard tonight, um, if I could suggest to Councillor Black that maybe it be with the sections of 4.2, 4.2.4, and 4.6 um, consist of only urban residential and hamlet residential areas as per bylaw 62. Uh, so, and if it's not supported, then we have an opportunity to put another motion on the floor? Yes. Yeah. Well, what I'm hearing, the reason why I put down, said Simcoe only is because I'm hearing around the table that the other areas don't have any concerns about it. So, and that's the problem with our amalgamation that, you know, we paint everybody with the same brush, but we don't have all the same concerns as each community. So um, that's why I've done that. Okay, and, and again, I'm not here to debate, but it seems to me, Pam, that our zoning ball is for Norfolk County. Do we, do we just pick on, I don't mean to pick on, do we just isolate one urban area and say that's a rule there? I, I think we're trying to get out of that. Well, that's what we had with our four former bylaws uh, and we've eliminated those and we're trying to unify the county. So, Pam, do you wish to speak on that? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, Again, what I would suggest is that the wording be um, urban residential or hamlet residential. Uh, we don't specify anywhere in the zoning bylaws specifically about Delhi or Simcoe or Waterford other than site-specific policies. Uh, Councillor Black, the motion that is possible, I'm not suggesting you move it, but that section's 4.2, 4.24. You can see them on page 473. I know you have it in front of you. And 4.6. Respecting various parking issues be amended to only apply, only apply to our urban areas and hamlet residential areas. I don't think it will be supported by this council, so okay. I wouldn't be prepared to put that motion on That's the floor. Fine. Okay, well, then I'll uh, entertain something that uh, you wish to put on the floor. <laughs> well, I put it, I said, okay, let me try. Uh, just the, the 4.2, I want to do it one at a time, 4.23 is the proposed that um, the motion is to s support the, this only in the urban areas of Norfolk County. So <clears throat> see if I get any you're dealing with f section 4.2 only. Right. Uh, and that would be amended to only apply to the urban residential areas. That Right. wording. Thank you. Let's see where it goes. And you also agree with uh, 4.2.3 or not? Well, I'd rather just do it one at a time. Okay. Okay, and uh, I think we have about a 1 a.m. curfew tonight, so we'll proceed with this one at a time, if that's Council's wishes. And uh, 4.2.3 you don't want. Just be right with you. Uh, I have to respect that a councillor has put a motion on. It would say that section 
be supported only in the urban residential area of Norfolk County. Thank you, sir. That's Councillor Black's motion. Do I have a seconder? It's going to be a long evening here, I can tell you that right now. I don't have a seconder, so I'm not going to go with that one. Okay, Councillor Brunton. I, I heard Pam or Shannon say that they had some comments. We've all expressed our interest around this table. We could be here to 1 a.m. unless we perhaps send it back to staff, make their uh, amendments that they have and the ones that we've expressed, and bring it back. And, uh, and I'll make that a motion. I listed four, and, and some of them maybe have more than one part, but you have seven or eight of them? I'd like to hear them. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Pam, please. Three, Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, because we've had a lot of comments tonight. Um, if I could make some suggestions, and if there's anything in addition that um, Council wants included, we can do that. I think we also need some clarification on if you want anything else. Um, so with respect to um, recreational vehicles, parking, um, and landscaping, I would suggest that with, uh, again, sections uh, 4.2.3, 4.2.4 .4 and 4.6 consist of only urban residential and hamlet residential areas. Um, that section 11, which is the hazard land uh, change houses, be removed um, to be reconsidered at a later date. Um, and that section 7.1.8, which is the crematoriums, um, A, be changed to two hectares or 4.9.4.2 <laughs> acres. <laughs> Um, and the F be changed from 70 meters to 200 meters, and the words residential zone be changed to residence, and that's in bylaw 61. Sure can. Um, that section 7.1.8, um, A be changed from two, to two acres, from eight acres. Hectors, sorry. The A be changed from two the A be changed from eight hectares to two hectares, which is 4.9.4.2 .4 acres. Um, and the F be changed from 70 meters to 200 meters. And the words residential zone be changed to residence. Pam, do you want to give us the uh, setback again on the crematorium? Uh, the F be changed from 70 meters to 200 meters. Okay. And again, council, if this motion passed, it'll go back to staff and it'll come back to this council, correct? So it will be back here, but at least we can prove the balance tonight, keep moving it forward. I don't think there was anything else brought up from the public or council. I'm trying to think. Certainly you've covered all mine. I had five. <laughs> Mr. Brunton, do you wish to make that a motion? Yes, I do. Don't ask me what it was, but I... You know. We'll fix you up. Seconder? Councillor Black, thank you, sir. Listen carefully. Make sure we get it right. Councillor Brunton has moved. Councillor Black has seconded that report DCS 17-98 be referred back to staff for a further report, including consideration of the comments provided at the December the 12th, 2017 meeting. And they, as per Pam has noted. Discussion on this motion. Go ahead, Councillor Height, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Luke. It was made mention earlier that, uh, you know, a member wanted to move a motion forward for something that's obviously a pressing issue in his ward. Personally, I don't have a problem like with that. I have shoreline erosion problems. Council supports that for me. And if it's a pressing problem in somebody's area, I would definitely support that. I don't have these problems. We're, we're more of a resort, lakeside community, and maybe that's what makes Ward 1 the best ward in Norfolk County, Mr. Mayor. But, you know, if it's a problem in the urban area, so be it. And I don't see why it really matters to us how we define our bylaws. Because we do have urban, we have residential, we have agriculture. It doesn't really matter where it goes. It's not really picking on anybody. It's at 
you know, doing what the people are asking. That's how I feel it, and if there's more stipulations in it, so be it. But That's fine. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? It's carried. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much, staff, and thank you, public, for your input on that. Okay. Council Black. So we just moved that those sections. Are we going to adopt the rest of it? We moved that the entire report the be whole referred report. back. Yes, that was uh, 